Good morning. I'm behind the gavel with Jason here. We're talking about the Chiefs, Super Bowl memorabilia, football memorabilia, sports memorabilia in general. What does the value of a Super Bowl win do uh, to sports memorabilia for a team? Uh, some other things about the Casey Auction Company and about the auction industry as a whole. I'm behind the gavel with Jason. We'll share this on my page real quick <clears throat> and get rolling. So you see, I have this book by Bill Griggs that we sold. I know from Grigsby's personal estate a few years ago. Yeah, we all love Grigsby. Um, for those who don't know, who are not from Kansas City, I know people all over the country watch this. Bill Grigsby was the sports announcer, the, the, the color commentary guy for the Kansas City Chiefs for decades. He was a, Bill was a beloved Kansas City sports personality. He was a co-owner in uh, basketball teams, professional basketball teams with Lamar Hunt back in the 70s. He was involved in professional soccer, lived in Parkville. And this is a book that we got when we sold his items for his collection uh, a few years ago for his family. <coughs> and I've been thinking a lot about old time Chiefs because I grew up in Kansas City listening to Bill call uh, the games. And uh, it's a beautiful day for football was his cut punchline. And he almost always had a martini with him, even at the stadium. And you could tell it some days more than others. And uh, that's part of the fun about Bill Grigsby. Um, when we sold his pieces a couple years ago, we had a championship football from 69-70 Chiefs team that was signed by the entire team. Um, that ball brought, I think, $2,500, $3,000. There was football signed by other teams similar era 68 i believe and 72 that brought money but nowhere near as much he bought close to a thousand dollars a piece so the easy answer is of course items from a super bowl team have more value in the secondary market than items from non-super bowl teams people remember winners people want to be associated with winners they want to collect winners history is written by the winners no matter who wins this weekend whether it's the diners or the chiefs Nobody will talk, very few people will talk about the second place team, the losing team. The attention will be focused on either Jimmy Gerba, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy G, Garofalo for the Niners, or Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. It's just that simple. Uh, I'm going to focus more on the Chiefs stuff because I'm a Kansas City guy. Love the Chiefs. See, I'm wearing an old school vest right here. Uh, I had this from the 90s when I used to have season tickets before I was married. And uh, kind of funny, I pulled pull out the bottom of the drawer this morning. I was like, is that thing still going to fit? It got on. Uh, it used to hang off the shoulders. Now it wraps around the belly. But, you know, hey, it, it works. Uh, and it's old school. It's still got a great color. It's one of the things that you will notice when we're talking about antiques, collectibles, and other things is quality. This is absolutely a very quality piece. That red is the exact same red today as it was back then. Uh, it was an expensive vest back in the day. It was a pro line. Uh, there was the, the, the stadium stuff. You bought the stadium. I bought a t-shirt a couple weeks ago, uh, just as a spur of the moment purchase Wore it once washed it and the red is different. So quality, no matter what you're talking about, will translate into value down the road. This vest is worth more than a cheap vest from the same time frame. Uh, if I were to sell it because it has more quality, it still looks like it's, like if I, you didn't know this was 30 years old, it would be hard to say by looking at it that it's 30 years old because the colors are still crisp. Uh, the stitching is still crisp. Everything about it is still good. And I wore this thing quite a bit back in the day. Um, and so what, what, surround, what I am surrounding the Super Bowl are going to have more value going forward. We get calls, emails, and, and requests and correspondence all the time about, I've got a newspaper from the Chiefs victory in 1970. I have it from the World Series of 85 Royals. I have it from the moon landing. I have a newspaper. Newspapers are, generally speaking, worth very little in the secondary market because next on Monday, if the Chiefs win, it will be by far the most sold issue of the Kansas City Star in the last decade. And it will probably be the most sold to Kansas City Star from this point going forward, because as we all know, newspaper industry is not a dying breed. But they will print and sell millions of copies on Monday if the Chiefs win with the head blind. You know, Lombardi Trophy's coming to Kansas City after 50 years. Whatever the headline is, Mahomes Maniac, uh, Mahomes Magic, whatever it is, that newspaper is going to sell a ridiculously high amount of volume on Monday. Now, 
the pair of cleats that Mahomes wears on Sunday, those will be ridiculously expensive now, tomorrow, next year, next decade, 100 years from now, because there will only be one. When I was on Matt DeCorsi's show, Start a Puzzle a while back, we talked about this very same thing. Uh, and DeCorsi is actually a collector of other things, but he said from the 85 Royals, he bought one of Eric Hosmer's jerseys. He paid a fair amount of money for it, but it's a jersey he wore during one of the games, and, and he has the, the, all the information he bought right from MLB through MLB auctions. But he said that's a unique thing, and it will always have more value to a sports collector because it's a very definitive thing that there is just not more of. And so when you're looking at buying things for – if you're looking at buying things for investment – after the Super Bowl, whether you're a Niners fan or a Chiefs fan or a football fan in general, you want to spend the money on the objects that are not mass produced. Nothing that is mass produced will have value going forward. There'll be a commodity market for it. There'll be somebody who likes it. Uh, there's a company selling limited edition footballs right now for $90 a piece, 5, 000, limited to 5,000. I'm like, well, that's four and a half million dollars. So if you sell 5,000, that's a pretty good, pretty good couple of weeks for you. Um, those will have some value. People will always kind of want the artwork is interesting. They'll always display well in a bar. It might always be a $100, $200 thing, but it's never going to be extremely valuable. There's 5,000 of them made. There will very rarely be more than 5,000 anybody's who want to have that to a point where they'll competitively bid for it. <coughs> and so when you're looking at the value of sports memorabilia in relationships to winning teams or any teams in general, keep in mind that scarcity is oftentimes more important than quality or, or, or anything else. The story behind it, the provenance, sports is a story. We get wrapped up in it. My wife and Amy here at the office are tired of it. Like it's been two weeks of every special, every moment I've got a sports video playing. I'm reading about it. I'm looking at it. I spent, and I've been sick, so I've, you know, it's it's even more compelling and more engrossing because I've, you know, been in a head cold. Um, but let me tell you, there are tens of thousands of people just like me all over the country, if not hundreds of thousands of people like me, diving deep into the sports of it, into the story of it, into the storylines, into the D Ford lined up in the neutral zone last year that, uh, and now he's playing for the Niners and. You know, all these storylines, Mahomes being drafted 10th, the Niners drafted in front of him. Could they have Mahomes now? Would they be doing as well? All those different things, all what all the pundits are saying, I'm deep into it, and I'm not the only one. And so sports is a story. It's, the, it's one of the very few memorabilia antique type markets that is driven solely off of story and performance of other people. You know, when you collect antique furniture, it's not because of the um, – the, the the widespread story. It's about the quality of the piece. Now, it might be from a workshop. It might be from a region. But it's not because of a town or a city, generally speaking, passionate about it <coughs> like sports does. And so the, the story is being told daily. And so, like I said, history always favors the victors. The, the, you know, it's always written by the victors. And so if the Chiefs win, their memorabilia will become more valuable um, now in the short term, but also the long term. And it's just going to be fun to watch. Again, I'm obviously geeked up about it. You guys have never seen me wear a vest to do a behind the gal with Jason before. So, uh, you know, go Chiefs. I'm so excited. I'm going to stay home and watch you with my family. My oldest son and I have watched most of the games together this year, and I think that's the plan on Sunday. Uh, so we'll uh, yell and scream at the TV all game long. But anyway, so that's what's going on in sports. Maybe if you have questions about that, let me know. Uh, other things from Behind the Gavel with Jason, Missouri's Best, MissouriMagazines.com has a competition every year of Missouri's Best whatever. It could be accountants, it could be auto body repair, it could be restaurant, it could be resort, whatever it is. Well, this year they had auction house category, which I didn't know about. Uh, I didn't know about it until they emailed me and said, hey, you won Missouri's Best Auction House. And so I want to thank the readers of MissouriMagazine.com. For voting us that uh, we won over anybody else who's in the competition. Uh, I know that uh, Selkirk and I in uh, 
uh, now Garth's, I think, in St. Louis was number third. I forget the number two team uh, company. Uh, we won that uh, just about two weeks ago now. Uh, last week, obviously, I was sick. I didn't do this live. Or else I mentioned it last week. Again, thank you all so much. Appreciate all the support we get. We keep we keep winning awards, and that's not why we do this. We won Pitch Best of four of six years. Uh, a local blogger say we're one of the ten best uh, auction houses. I mean, we keep getting accolades regularly. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Without us asking, all those votes are coming in because people just put us in there. We don't. We have never campaigned for a vote. We've never brought it to the attention of people during the voting process. We bring it to the attention after we've been voted on. And we are really humbled and thankful for your continued support and hope that you continue to do that via votes, but also via bids at our auctions and with your trust in selling things at auction through the KC Auction Appraisal Company. Uh, we feel like we do a pretty good job and a lot of people in the region think we do the same thing, obviously, with all of these awards that we keep on winning. Speaking of that, it was a great auction on Monday night that closed. We're getting ready for our next auction uh, here at the KC Auction Company. Follow our page on Facebook for updates. Handsome Hermes, Louis Vuitton, and Celine pieces coming yesterday. Beautiful Baccarat base, and we have much more coming in next week for our next auction. If you have questions about consigning, let us know. Either here, we have fa email or phone call. I'll give you that information here at the end of the video. <coughs> Just read a fascinating article this morning about the diamond industry that we'll talk about more next week. There's an interesting article in the New Yorker, uh, newyorker.com. It is a long article um, talking about this company out of Canada who's changing uh, the diamond industry and working hard to, to change it even more going forward. A uh, really fascinating article that talks about Sotheby's um, quite a bit in it through a, a failed auction attempt they had through those folks. Uh, the diamond industry is very fascinating, and again, we're going to talk about that in detail next week. Uh, I'm going to spend the next week kind of researching some more ins and outs of that, talking about historic diamond prices uh, and things along those lines. We still we saw a lot of jewelry here at the Casey Auction Company, and so anytime industry articles come up like that, I'm very intrigued by them. So again, go Chiefs. I know Griggs be here. Uh, we're, a lot of us are thinking about you, wishing you were here to call it one more game for us. Uh, Sunday is going to be a beautiful day for football in Miami. Thank you again for all the readers and votes from Missouri's Magazine, MissouriMagazines.com, Missouri's Best 2020. If you have any questions, thank you all give, and thank you all for watching. We appreciate you tuning in every week here on YouTube, or LinkedIn, whatever the, the channel might be that you find us at. If you have questions, please post them below here. Send us a direct message. Give us an email at info at kcauctioncompany.com info at letter k letter c auction and company is spelled out dot com you can give us a phone call 816-283-3633 816-283-3633 with any of your questions about what we talk about on behind the gal with jason if you have questions you think we should talk about on behind the gal with jason or if you have questions about items that you have estates that you're working through Concerns that you have, you want to do an appraisal event. We do those regularly around the around the region for different organizations. Please let us know. Look forward to uh, talking to you all again next Friday. And in the meantime, follow us on Facebook here. Watch our videos. Watch our posts. We're doing a lot of interesting things all the time. And again, go Chiefs. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday. <laughs>